Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. I am happy today to be with Dr. Lindsay Morris. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Kate. Um, you are a postdoctoral fellow alumni from, of the program. Tell me about what you did here at Vanderbilt. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for having me, Kate. It's always great to come back to Vanderbilt. Um, so uh, my career at Vanderbilt started in 2000. Um, I entered into the PhD program in chemical engineering. I graduated in 05, and then I actually worked as a research assistant for about a year and a half in the medical school. Um, I left to pursue some other opportunities and came back at, in a postdoc position in 2011, and I was in a postdoc until 2015 in the lab of Kevin Nicewinder, uh, where I worked on uh, characterizing in vivo allosteric modulators for a G-protein coupled receptor that's found in pancreatic tissue. Um, called the glucagon light peptide 1 receptor. Um, so I did a lot of mouse work and also a lot of bench work at that time. So what did you know? <laughs> so current, my current position is at a small startup company in Nashville uh, called Axial Healthcare. We're located in Cummins Station, and I've been there for about a year since last August. Uh, we are primarily a data analytics company, I would say. Uh, so we take in medical claims data um, and pharmacy claims data from health insurance companies, and we perform analytics on the data. And the analytics we perform uh, are like risk, risk stratification models that helps doctors and nurses make better decisions about how to treat uh, their patients who are in pain and also more appropriately prescribe opioids to combat the current opioid epidemic. Okay, so... If you could take your day or your week and split it up and to divide it up, how what do you do each you know each week? Like how do you categorize it? Right, that's a great question. Um, so it's hard to say that there's a typical day um, working for a small startup company. I was actually the eighth employee of the company, so you can imagine that things were really just getting started, and we didn't really have a lot of infrastructure at the time. So I probably have spent the last year doing things that a director of data science and analytics doesn't normally do. Uh, but I would say I have spent most of the past year just helping to develop uh, the code base for the analytics uh, that includes writing SQL code and Python code to perform the calculations that need to be performed. Um, also understanding how to format that code um, coming up with conventional headers for the code that we use across the team. Um, also, code versioning and understanding how to manage that and just really build, building that platform of analytics that we really just didn't have in the beginning. So I would say a lot of my time has been spent doing that in the past year. Um, other activities that are part of my week include uh, speaking with clients about getting their data uh, so we have to get data to do anything, and that data actually comes from our clients. So I communicate with them what our requirements are for formatting of the data, and also what the column headers should be, and, and things like that. I also do a lot of the analytics themselves. So I, I run the code, um, I QA the code, <laughs> make sure that we're getting the right answers. I spend quite a bit of time actually making visualizations to communicate our findings. So that includes making bar charts, pie charts, uh, line graphs, things of that nature. So certainly a lot of data analytics and data analysis type activities. Okay, cool. So how is this a good fit for you as a person? Like what are the things that you really like about the job? Yes, so it's definitely a lot different from an academic environment. And what I really like about it is that it's very fast paced. Um, academia is pretty slow, to be honest. And I think um, a lot of times people don't wanna stay in academic positions because of you know funding and things of that nature. But I think we often kind of miss other things about academia and about that environment that may or may not fit our personalities. And one of those things for me was the pace just, it's very slow. Um, getting grants can be an extremely long process. Um, a startup company is completely different. Things are extremely fast. Uh, usually projects uh, can last from anywhere from a day to a week and then you're done and you have to move on. Um, I've also gotten requests that need to be fulfilled the same day. <laughs> so it's just, it's just very, very quick. 
the second thing I really like about working at a startup is that you really have an opportunity to be inventive. Um, you know, in, in the beginning, we didn't really have products built out. Uh, so there's really no one to invent stuff except me, right? Or, or the people who are there. Uh, we don't have like specific departments to really do things. So, you know, for example, uh, one thing that's come up recently is that we needed a client report to give to the client monthly and no one had a client report, right? So I just had to invent one. I had to sort of understand uh, what the client really needs and what we, we really had to offer and just build a report, just understand what we're going to put in it, what graphs are we going to put in it, what are what are we trying to communicate to the client on a monthly basis? So I really like that creative aspect and, and being able to invent. Cool. So if someone was interested in doing what you do, what are some of the skills that they will need or gain in their training to help them with their, their role? Right. Uh, so I think from a technical level, um, the skills that a person would need um, to, to sort of hone are uh, technically related, technical related skills. So understanding uh, data structures and relational databases and also cloud data storage. Um, so a couple of examples are Google BigQuery, which is a Google product. And it's, uh, it's just, it's literally like a data storage relational database that one can query using SQL or structured query language. Um, another example is Amazon Web Services. You know, everyone thinks of Amazon as a bookseller, uh, but they actually have a whole database storage and cloud computing aspect of their business that's heavily used within the tech community. Um, so just understanding data and how it's queried and stored, I think, is, is one skill that I gained. Um, also, from a programming standpoint, standpoint, learning Python or R, which are open source programming languages, um, that's something that I began and have developed since I've been in my current job. Um, I think beyond that, um, some business acumen as well. I think this has definitely been an on-the-job learning experience, uh, but just understanding the healthcare space and how healthcare companies work. Uh, what types of acronyms are used within the business and sort of picking up on that and, and learning it as you go. Uh, so those are the skills that, that one needs to sort of enter into the space. Okay, so tell me about how you got this job. What, what are some of the ways that you, um, maybe you networked or what are, what are your strategies that you right. landed your job? So thanks to the <laughs> Brett office, um, you guys have a great um, career development program here. And um, as you know, you offer PhD Career Connections, uh, which is a seminar series uh, that brings people from different industries to talk to uh, graduate students and postdocs. I met my current supervisor, um, Dr. Elizabeth Ann Stranger, who's our Chief Science Officer, uh, through a PhD Career Connections. She came and gave a seminar on big data and data analysis. At the time, I was ending my postdoc and I was really looking to move on from Vanderbilt. I was extremely interested in doing more computational work and kind of getting away from the bench. Uh, so I met her at a PhD Career Connections and um, I approached her and asked her if I could come to Axial and just sort of see what they were doing and kind of shadow because I, I wasn't sure if this was the right career for me. Um, so I did that. I went to Axial a few times and at the time I was also taking an online Coursera class to learn Python. Uh, so they actually asked me to make a graph of some of their data in Python, which I had no idea what I was doing at the time, uh, but I was able to get it done and they loved it. Um, so I really built a rapport at that time with the people who were at Axial, which was all of about four or five people. Um, they were at the Entrepreneur Center at the time. And uh, it just so happens that around around the same time that I was doing this, uh, they received a huge amount of venture capital funding to get the business going. Uh, so it was really great timing uh, on my part. Uh, I asked Elizabeth, I told her that I, I loved the people and I was really enjoying the work. And um, if she wanted uh, to offer me a job, I would be interested in working there. And a couple weeks later, uh, they offered me a job. Awesome, that's great. Um, 
So if you were a trainee again, if you're a grad student again, a postdoc again, we know you won't do that again. But if you did, um, what would you do differently? Would you do anything differently? Yeah. Um, so I really took a, a not a very direct path out of my PhD. Um, I didn't want to do a postdoc mostly because I didn't want to stay in academia. I, I had this idea that only people who want to be professors do postdocs. So uh, I really tried to get away from academia after I graduated. I think if I, I if I had to do it all over again, I would have gone into a postdoc position because there's a lot of skills that one can learn during that time. Um, first of all, the honing soft skills, so understanding really how to network, um, you know, what kinds of activities to be involved with uh, to really have appropriate career development and also explore different careers, uh, which it's hard to know when you have never worked anywhere and always been in school, right? Uh, so I think that's what I would have done differently. I would have gone ahead and done a postdoc position right out of my PhD and really focused on career development during that time, which I ended up doing later, um, but I would have done that sooner. <laughs> um, and then I think I would have had a more direct career path. But, but that being said, I believe that all of the positions I've had leading up to this one have been extremely useful and a great learning experience. So you never know where life is going to take you. <laughs> nice. Thank you so much for coming back. We really appreciate your time. Sure. Thank you so much. <laughs>